it is time. All right. So, uh, are you familiar with the artist Flume, Owen? Uh, I've, uh, I think so. Yeah, uh, I've uh, seen Flume on some. Uh, oh, go on. I just totally just jumped in and interrupted you. No, you're good. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to. I have I have a bunch of running playlists on Spotify um, that are just super eclectic, and um, I do it by year. And it's basically like my favorite ones from my weekly discover. And then if I hear something out anywhere i'll like sound hound it and add it to the playlist and <clears throat> i have have like it's like 10 year almost 10 years running at this point i think but uh you should share right, that so, with people uh yeah maybe um that's actually a good idea uh i'm just so distracted by everything so yeah. <laughs> I'll, remember, I'll remember that um but yeah i think flume might be on there and toro Imoy definitely is on there um so yeah cool uh so harley edward stretton known professionally as flume is an australian musician and he's actually regarded as a pioneer of future based and future bass and helped to popularize the genre he won a grammy award for best dance and electronic album for his album skin in 2020 and Chaz Bear, known professionally as Toro Imoy, is an American singer, songwriter, and graphic designer, and he's often recognized as a spearhead for the chill wave genre in the 2010s, alongside others like Washed Out and Neon Indian. So we have these two uh, genre-defining defi artists that are collaborating together on a single. This is Flume featuring Toro Imoy for their 2020 release, The Difference. I like that, that clock track. Ooh, I like that drum and bass. Yeah, I'm about this. This is going on the playlist. Whoever's picking these, awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, this video is really cool. Wow. It gives me like this scrimmage show vibe. Like, the guy on the left is watching the one on the right. No, they're not. <laughs> What's happening to him is like me in the middle of like my favorite band set. That's like, <laughs> or like when it starts to kick in. So what do you think, Mike? Uh, I actually really like how the drums evolved. I mean, if you notice when they first came in, they were kind of like this really staccato, mm -hmm. like, you know, with like a faded out and right. a filtered thing. And then it kind of fleshed into this drum and bass thing, which I really, really liked. I also liked how they had that lo-fi filter on it mm -hmm. where it kind of gave yeah. it that like... You know, you're listening to like a tape cassette. It has crunch. this like, yeah, this crunch and also like this like whisper almost. And um, I think that's a lot of like, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Washed Out. And he does that with a lot of his music, that like lo-fi sheen where he puts on everything. Mm -hmm. And then also the video is really cool. I like how it's kind of simple, but then also he's putting in this really cool like visual aesthetic as well. I like it when videos start low budget and then like as they go on, you're like, this isn't low budget. And, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. it's cool how uh you know just like the video is the same thing as the music it starts unassuming and then it's gonna like flesh out into like something more yeah definitely i like i like how the there's two <clears throat> different perspectives going on in the video we watched uh, uh the i don't remember which song it was on the reacts but it was um it was the phoenix song wasn't it yes yeah, it was it had the that new two, phoenix yeah song. that it had a really similar feel with the two uh, two mm -hmm. perspectives and then um, we've been listening to a lot of songs lately with that double, that doubled detuned vocal effect. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if that's just getting like popular or something. It but just it, gives it like this weird dissonant, but like still accessible, yeah. you know, feeling to it. Accessible is a good word. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it kind of does sound a lot like Phoenix. Mm -hmm. That's what I was noticing with that. I, I do love the drums and, and the low bass, the saw, like the slight saw on it was pretty sweet. 
Yeah, what did uh, what did you think, Owen? No, I'm really digging this. I'm, I'm vibing to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd put, like I said, I'd, I'd work out to this. I could work to this. Work or work out, you know. Yeah. Or just put it on anytime. That kick is huge. Leading into the other one, that's cool. Man, that one just that's flew by. So good. Ending. Yeah, it was only by two minutes and nineteen seconds long. Right, but Shortly he lived. still made a statement because yeah. there are some bands that they have like a seven-minute song and then like the first two minutes, like they're not saying anything. Mm-hmm. And uh, is, uh, I'm sorry, is um, go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that was really it. You go. Uh, right on. Um, no, I was wondering how new this song is. Um, because I, I know a lot of artists especially ones with doing electronic stuff um, have been putting sh- or making shorter songs because it fits with the Spotify algorithm. Oh, that um, makes sense. Or yeah, this something is, like that. And this is 2020. So. Yeah, and then it yeah. also fits with people's goldfish brains. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Everybody has a goldfish brain now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. songs are literally just going to be like 15-second TikTok videos. That's like all they're, yeah. ever, that's like all that's they're turning they're into. Be like, like, uh, next. So I really like that song. My only... Co- my only I wish it was longer. <laughs> yeah, me yeah. too. I could, I, I could totally see that, like being stretched out and kind of having some cool, like uh, synthesizer leads over it, and like make it get really spacey, and then pop right back into those drums. That'd yeah, sweet. I saw Flume um, headline Electric Forest Festival, so I couldn't imagine like hearing this song with like you know what, like forty, fifty thousand people all getting down to it. I bet it would be like magic. Are most of the songs with Flume like drum and bass like that? I don't think so. Uh-huh. Uh, but they do it. have that like Porter Robinson nostalgic, like almost like a group of kids singing with like this weird like uh, filter over it, right? Hmm. Because like I feel like a lot of people, like you mentioned, like are going towards that type of style, like Phoenix, where it's like this high pitched collective of voices that kind of like remind you of a different time almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, there's something nostalgic about it, even though it's only from two years ago but the whole that's that's the feeling it gives me yeah and i'm sure that's what they were going for right yeah 